Dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Karolina Anna Kulpa and I'm from Faculty Artes Liberales at University of Warsaw. In my short presentation, I would like to show you the writings of Małgorzata Musierowicz in the context of her work combining culinary arts with education about antiquity. I invite you into her literary cuisine with antiquity flavors. Meals were one of the important aspects of the lives of the ancient Greek and Roman gods, heroes and ordinary people. And the Lucaran banquets organized by a Roman politician and described by Plutarch become even proverbial. As Epicurus is believed to have said in the 3rd century before Christ, the fountain and root of every good is the pleasure of the stomach, and all wise rules and all superfluous rules are measured alike by the standard. In myths, we can find information about ambrosia and nectar providing immortality and eternal youth to the gods, about a golden apple of Ares which become the spiritus movens of the Trojan War, and the fruit gathered by Hesperides about the pomegranate seeds eaten by Persephone, or about a cornucopia created by Zeus from the horn of god Amalfia. In turn, the cookbook by Apicius, which has survived to contemporary times, shows how unusual, from our perspective of course, could have been the myth of the richer social class of Roman society. Exquisite meat dishes, including a dish from ostrich and turnip, patina with pine nuts, Fried artichokes and carrots with garum are only a few of the recipes from this work from the second century after Christ. There is no denying that in the modern world, eating and preparing meals is also an important aspect of every human being's life. However, is it possible to combine cooking with education about the culture and history of ancient Greece and Rome? In my speech, I would like to prove that the answer to this question is of course it is. An example of such a reception of antiquity can be given by the works of Małgorzata Musierowicz, a writer, graphic designer and, like me, a native Poznań citizen. It is worth noting that the author is the sister of Stanisław Barańczak, famous Polish poet and translator, and one of her four children, a daughter Emilia Kieraś, is also a writer, translator and editor. Musirowicz has lived in Poznań all her life and since 1977 has published a series of humorous novels entitled Jerzyciada, Jerzyciad, which received many literary awards. The title was created on the pattern of the name of one of districts of Poznań, in which the plot is set, Jerzyce, and Homer's Iliad. The series, read by generations of young people, includes 23 volumes, numbered from 0 to 22, with the next volume, Hucherko, to be expected to be published in late 2021. Apart from the Jerzyciata cycle, the author has also written several books with recipes. Całuski Pani Darling, Mrs. Darling's Kisses, Wasuk Literacki, Literary Glatton, Na Gwiazdkę, For Christmas, and Musirowicz dla Zakochanych, Musirowicz for Lovers. Due to the limited time of my presentation, I would like to focus only on selected examples of the reception of antiquity in Musierowicz's works in the culinary context. I will present to you some recipes for dishes in which the author refers to ancient history and mythology. I will present three dishes described in two volumes of the Jerzyciada series, Pulpecja and Dziecko Piątku, Friday Child. The author provides recipes for two of them in one of her cookbooks, Wasuk Literacki, Literal Glatten. Then I will focus on the reception of Asian times in recipes in Mrs. Darling's Kisses. The plot of Jerzyciada is connected with Poznań. And, and most of the volumes present the life of the Boreko family, Ignace and Mila, their four daughters and then their growing up grandchildren. As the novelist herself admitted, Latin has been constantly present in her life from an early age, so it is no wonder that the main characters of Jerzyciada, the Borekos, use this language in everyday life. Furthermore, the head of the family and one of his four daughters are classical philologists. Ancient culture is also apparent in the myths prepared by Borekos. The kitchen in their apartment and Five Roosevelta Street is an important place for many of the characters in the novels. This is where the Boreko family have important conversations and friendly chats, 
over a cup of tea and snack. The dishes prepared by the Borekos for family members and numerous friends are modest, but nutritious. Without a doubt, the names associated with ancient culture make this simple meal seem interesting and more sophisticated. It is also worth remembering that the novels Pulpezia and Friday Child are set in 1991 and 1993, when capitalism was just being born in Poland and home-cooked meals were the basis of everyday diet. I would also like to remind you that one of the symbols of emerging capitalism, the first McDonald's, were opened in Poznań in 1994, two years after the first opening of this fast food restaurant in Warsaw, Poland. In the Jerzycjada volumes, Musierowicz describes dishes without giving a detailed recipe. It was only in literary Glatten that she published the exact ways of preparing selected dishes, because the book is a collection of recipes for dishes that appeared in the series. In the novel Pulpecia, we find two ancient specialities. The first dish I would like to mention is the so-called paluszki aspazi, fingers of aspasia, crepes with homogenized cheese mixed with fruit, rolled up and sprinkled with cinnamon. Natalia Borejko decorated each of these fingers with a strawberry half as a nail to make them look real. A second example is Zwolte Jabka Hesperid, the golden apples of Hesperides. Apples filled with a bit of jam and baked in pastry, which can also be used to make decorative leaves. In turn, in the volume Friday Child, the author describes how Gabriela Boreco prepares Eye of a Cyclops, fried egg on toast with a drip of ketchup in the middle. This is a perfect example of creating a unique dish from simple ingredients with an interesting name. As in the literary glutton, so in Mrs. Darling's Kisses, the title refers to the mother in Peter Pan by J.M. Berry, Musierowicz gives precise indications for the readers to reproduce these dishes, and, at the same time, she brings closer a biography or a summary of the myth to which the name of the meal refers. Cełuski Pani Darling, Mrs. Darling's Kisses, is not a typical cookbook for children, and adults of course, but rather a series of stories about various characters from children's and young adult literature, both Polish and worldwide, including those mythological and historical ones from ancient Greece and Rome discovered during primary school education. In the book we will find 60 dish recipes, referring, for example, to Panienka Zokienka, The Lady from the Window by Jadwiga Uszczowska, Five Children and It by Edith Nesbitt, the Six Bullerby Children by Estrid Lindgren, Aventura o Basie, Argument about Basia by Colonel Makuszyński, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain, and 19 dedicated to ancient culture. Next to each recipe, readers will find a graphic by Musierowicz that depicts the character or dish. The author does not try to reconstruct ancient recipes, but what is extremely interesting she represents characters traits in desserts, soups, and salads. The reader can learn how to prepare Julian bread, Demeter's cookies, Hypnos cookies, Xantippe's cookies, Laculus dessert, Beautiful Helen's pearls, Shorbert Achilles' heels, Democles' honey and cheese pie, Fruit tables of Aeneas, Pyrrhus breakfast, Salad for Poseidon, Dionysus Lentils, Witch Thursday Special, Green Zephyr, Maida's Golden Pearls, Ears Golden Apples, Hercules' Soup, Baus's Vegetable Soup, and Phoenix Toad. Unfortunately, I can't present every one of these interesting recipes, but I assure you that the often humorous description of the characters with whom the author has associated a particular dish is worth reading. The first of the recipes related to antiquity is Julian bread. It is a proposal of used bread with garlic and cumin or other herbs. The author suggests preparing it for New Year's Eve because as she explains to the reader, Caesar introduced a new kind of calendar. In some chapters, Musierowicz explains phrases such as Laculus Feast, Pyrrhic Victory, the Sword of Democles and Achilles' Heel. In two recipes, the author showed an interesting depiction of these phrases as dishes. Laculus Dessert is a goblet with layers of fruit and whipped cream or ice cream, and Achilles' Heels refers to cookies. The humorous undertone is given by the term kruche, which in Polish means both shortbread and fragile, 
and thus refers to both the baking and the famous hills. It is also worth noting that in Democles' honey and cheese pie recipe, the author mentions Apicius cookbook. The reader is also educated on the attributes of the particular deities. For example, in Hypnes Cookies, Musierowicz explains that Dev's brother was often shown with poppy, which is why she recommends orange honey poppy seeds cookies before bedtime. The Bitters Cookies, on the other hand, contain four of the goddess attributes two kinds of grain, oats and wheat, figs and poppy seeds. In this chapter, the author for the first time mentions Jan Parandowski's Mythology, a significant book educating Polish youth about antiquity for the last couple of decades. By retelling the myth of Persephone and the changing of the seasons, she points the reader to a specific chapter in Parandowski's classic work, encouraging further reading. The original dessert in this list is the green zephyr. Once again quoting Parandowski, the author explains that it was the calmest wind of all. A delicious and green dessert is a kind of cold cheesecake based on cottage cheese cream, homogenized cheese with sugar, egg yolks and butter, and green gooseberry or pistachio flavored jelly, as well as fruit that a young adept of the culinary art can find at home, such as oranges, berries, cherries and raspberries. Also not worthy is salad for Poseidon, based on smoked fish, mackerels or herrings, because the author concludes that the god of sea had to feed on what he found around him. Hercules' soup, on the other hand, is strong, comforting and warming, because it is based on garlic and served with cheesy toast. Eris' golden apples recalls the myth about the judgment of Paris. Three goddesses climbs the apple, Hera, Athena and Aphrodite. Paris awarded Aphrodite. The history led to a Trojan War. In this recipe, Musierowicz advises putting in the cake sticks with cardboard tickets on which we write for the most beautiful. Remember, that there should be exactly as many cards as many ladies. Women, girls, maidens, matrons or grandmothers will be present at the consumption of our dessert. Then the goddess Iris will be bite her fingers from helpless rage. I should admit that in my subjective opinion, the recipe for Zantipi's cookies is the most interesting. Musierowicz has a lot of understanding for Socrates' wife. She thinks that Xantippe had a difficult life because the philosopher didn't earn money and because women in Greece didn't have professions and didn't earn money, at least not the respected ones. Preparing cheap and nutritious meals might have been a challenge. As Musierowicz writes, here's what dish I imagine while thinking about Xantippe's fate, spicy onion cookies. Very nutritious and filling, yet as sharp as Xantippe's tongue and as scorching as her thoughts, and not too expensive. These are of course only selected examples of antiquity flavors in the literary cuisine of Małgorzata Musierowicz. The works of the author show how to present the ancient world to young readers in an enjoyable way. On one hand, she shares the knowledge of myths and characters known from ancient history while teaching cooking, and on the other, she teaches how to cook by referring the heroes of Greek and Roman myths and history. The stories described by the author, whether they are biographies of heroes and gods or ancient myths, are interesting enough to spark the reader's curiosity and desire to learn more about Julius Caesar's accomplishment or why Diomedes lived in a borough. The added value are the references to classic Polish works on antiquity, such as the already mentioned Parandowski's mythology, or the Swovnik Myth of Itradisi Kultury, Dictionary of Myths and Cultural Traditions by the famous Polish lexicographer Władysław Kopaliński, as well as now all over the world, Tangled Tales by Nathaniel Hawthorne. We have to remember that most of Musierowicz's books were published before the internet was available, so such bibliographic hints were extremely valuable, especially for a young reader. This is only a brief introduction to the reception of antiquity in the works of Małgorzata Musierowicz, including its culinary context. 
the combination of ancient culture with typically Polish products in the form of recipes accessible to the reader results in Małgorzata Musierowicz's works having undeniable educational value and are a rather unusual example of the contemporary reception of antiquity. That is why I have invited you to take a trip to the author's literary cuisine to get to know the mythological nature and its culinary aspects. Thank you for watching.